Hey everybody, this is Sherry with Butternut Hollow Crafts, hashtag old lady with tools. And I am live again on my Monday night. And tonight we are going to make a fun project. It's going to be a fall project because I'm thinking of fall already for uh, the seasons. And uh, we'll be using um, uh, Royce's decoupage papers, um, some stamps, a little paint, and... Uh, Hopefully you'll enjoy my project. So let's get started. Okay, so what I did is I took, I went out to my wood shop and I just cut out this basic pumpkin shape and then I um, stained it. And tonight I painted it um, white because uh, we're gonna decoupage it. And we are gonna be using, um, the textures uh, paper from Royce and this is what the whole sheet I'll just show you looks like it's got some yummy yummy texture on it but because this is a pumpkin I cut out this section of the rust because I thought it'd make a really cool um, rustic pumpkin and so we're going to decoupage it on there just like that but the stem up here is going to be green and so I want to take this sharp edge off and how I uh, take the edges off my paper is I use um, hi Doris thanks for joining me sweetie um, I am going to use the wet method and I hope you can see me and I'm just gonna wet this edge of this paper with this little bitty or this uh, fine brush I should say and then I'm just gonna tear it off because I do not want this, uh, I do not want a straight edge. Yes, most of it will be hit anyway. I just like the way the paper blends better if we don't have that sharp edge. So let's take that off of there like that. And then we're going to lay it on here I just want that to go up on the stem just a little bit. Make sure my paper is about where I want it. And again, I'm using uh, the DIY liquid patina. And we are going to. Hi, Barbara from Colorado. Wonderful. Rebecca from Mississippi. Joanne from St. Louis. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And so I'm just going to lay down this anchor row here, making sure that I put enough of my medium down. And we'll smooth it out. In this project, the, one of the nice things is if I get a few wrinkles, it will only add to it. But I've always said the wrinkles do not bother me, and they don't. And then I'm just going to wet my paper like you guys have seen Royce do lots of times because it does really help if you do not like wrinkles just kind of smooth it out a little bit and then again I've got to turn mine around because I am the way I'm doing this to make it easier let's get this paper folded up and I'm just going to fold it back to where I stopped and we'll lay our medium down and we'll get this decoupaged I thought this paper <clears throat> excuse me you guys I never had allergies and I swear I have them now I thought this paper though would make a really cool uh, background base for a pumpkin hi Jeannie Just going to keep smoothing it out as I go. And I'm using the saran wrap method. You could use the squeegee and if you like. The saran wrap is just what I had kind of gotten used to using. I, I do use the squeegee sometimes, though. I just want to make sure that this paper gets stuck down really good. For what I am 
going to do after. And I know it seems weird that we're thinking about fall, but as a creative, we got to be like at least five steps ahead of the season if we want to be ready. And so that's why I'm, I'm thinking of fall already. Okay, I'm going to lay this down. I'm just about done. I want this paper to relax a little bit on these edges. So I'll just give it a quick mist here. like it let loose all the way up here didn't it we'll get that fixed the paper's kind of fight me a little bit where I didn't wet it well hi Luann from Connecticut hey Colleen how you doing We're going to get this stuck down here, if we can. If my project wants to cooperate with me tonight. There we go. And now I'm going to give this a quick dry. Shouldn't take long. <clears throat> I think that's dry enough to wear we can get it sanded off quickly. You should finish them. Perfect time. I know, don't we always have unfinished projects, though? I know I do. I'll get this paper off. So here is the basic start of our pumpkin. Kind of looks like a pumpkin, don't it? I am going to decorate up a pumpkin, Colleen. I'm going to zhuzh up this wooden pumpkin that I just cut out of some pine. I cut the basic shape out of pine wood and stained it. 
because um i i like i don't usually finish my edges i don't like painting the edges and so as you can see i just stain them so that they don't pop out as raw wood and this is just a quick coat of this sealer just to help make the project seal or uh, my medium I'm going to put on here move just a little easier. I didn't want it soaking in my paper. Yes, Barbara, I think that happens to all of us. We all have unfinished projects that just uh, pile up. But I don't know about you but guys, but, you know, you almost got to wait to the project I don't know, speaks to you or, you know, if you don't like the direction it's heading, I do find if I walk away and I try and set it somewhere where I can see it, but if I walk away and then I just look at every now and then, something will usually come to me that I felt that was missing or needed to be done to it. So I don't think it's bad to walk away from something or or not finish it if you're just not happy with it at the time. This is a primitive pumpkin, Colleen, not a big round one. This is a more primitive style pumpkin. There, that feels pretty dry. And so I'm going to show you how I make stuff look like I painted it when I really didn't. So I'm going to use the sunflower stamp and um, a piece of the leaf from um, the Fruit of Harvest that has the big round pumpkins on there. So, and I'm going to stamp this right here first. And then I have a part of the stem here that I will add. So it looks like it's coming off of the corner here because I kind of want it to come off the page. So first I'll get my ink and I'm just going to stamp it with some IOD black ink. Colleen, you're funny. <laughs> Doesn't look like Canadian pumpkin. I think of pumpkins in Canada and the U.S. I'm guessing is probably the same. <laughs> but mine is a primitive pumpkin because I like primitive. <laughs> so. And on the stamp for this round... I really just want the outline of it. So I'm going to lay this down and hold it there with one hand. And my goal right now is just to get a good basic outline of this sunflower. Just lift it up. Ta-da. So there is the outline of my sunflower. Now I got to give this a dry. Because <clears throat> then we're going to paint it. Yes, Leanne. Sometimes our projects or pieces, whatever we're working on, really do speak to us. And 
And again, this is the IOD ink too. And this is in the black. Some spots are still a little wet, but I think we'll be okay. And so what I want to do is I want to I want to add a little color to that sunflower, but not so much that my paper doesn't come through because I really like the color of this paper. So I'm going to take my farmhouse paint in Lotus, just squirt a little bit there. And then I want to add, can you see me? I want to add water to it. Because I want I don't want it to be the thick paint. And then just dip my brush in some of the water and the paint. And and just paint the flower. And if I cover up any of the details. It's not a big deal to me because I will restamp this flower to bring them back in. But I really just wanted a little yellow for the sunflower, but yet let some of this paper shine, uh, come through. So I'm just going to go around and add this yellow color onto the sunflower. And it's not a heavy coat because I can always go back and add a second if I want. See where the paint wasn't or the ink wasn't completely dry, but it's not going to hurt a thing. I'm just getting the leaves, or the petals, I should say, the petals painted. And I like that you don't have to be exact, exact on this technique because I am not an artist in the respect that of a painter by any stretch. But I like doing this because it gives the appearance <laughs> that I am. But see, I like how this paper, the rust is still bleeding or popping through with this paint watered down. And I just think that looks so cool. This is probably the most uh, time consuming part of this technique, but in the end, you'll see it's, it's uh, well worth it. Get these up here around the center real quick. Okay. 
And again, you do not have to be exact. And don't worry if you cover up some of the details. Because when we restamp it, they're all going to come back. It's going to look really cool. So I'm just going to go back and... And now I'm just going to go back and introduce just a little sprigs of it heavier just to give it a little more uh, definition. Not the whole petal, just spots. That was one I missed. Okay, I think that looks, whoops, I missed a big one, didn't I, right there. We'll go in there and hit that real quick. Yeah, okay, so there's that. And I kind of like it. I like the way the paper is still popping through, but yet you still see the flower or the um the color and now we'll get the inside the inside of the flower you're giving me the nerve to try this watercolor effect you know what barbara um just do it this is i guess this is a form of watercolor but it's not watercolors um if you can draw or you're an artist go for it this is a way i have figured out that I can get some color in on my projects. And um, I don't really, you don't have to be the artist type, you know, where I know people that could freehand all this. I could never do that. To me, this is like, you know, when we were kids and we had coloring books, I can color in the lines pretty good. <laughs> so that's that's the way I look at it. It gave me the nerve to try this. And then I ended up really loving the effect that it gives. And you can really make some really pretty stuff. I think watercolor would be, would really pretty. I don't know that I could, I don't know if you can watercolor on top of um, the DIY patina. I've never tried it. Um, I would think you could if you used like that watercolor ground. I think you have to use again i am not that type of an artist so um i'm no expert on that technique so there's that the center is done I'll clean that brush off one more time because we're going to need it one more time and now i want to do one more stamp up here in this stamp I got to let this dry a little bit and then we'll restamp. I'm going to use the um the leaf part. Yes, Colleen, you try it with a round pumpkin. <laughs> and, and Colleen, the pumpkin stamp in the fruitful harvest would be really pretty to try. Just say it, honey. <laughs> And so I want a leaf kind of up here. And if you see, I want some of those curly cues too. So I am going to put this leaf, how do we want it? How about like right there? So I'm going to stamp that there. Because again, I want the just the basic outline of this leaf to show me where to paint. there and now i want a green and to get my green that the color of green i want because i want a darkish green yes barbara if you love coloring books you can do this dear and share your project please so i have the nine uh the what is it 70 percent cocoa and this is a uh, jalapeno and again this is farmhouse paint but i have found that if i mix these two i can i don't want the yellow though i can pretty much get a green 
that I like. I got a little too much water on my plate, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. And I want this to be just a little darker green. So let me pull in a little more of the cocoa. There. That green right there is about the green I like. So let's set this off to the side. And then I'm going to color in this leaf, but I need a little water in there. This paint is thick paint, and so I like a little water, again, because I want it to be kind of translucent. I forgot to dry that, didn't I, guys? Well, hopefully, hopefully we can make this work. Um, that's why I add the water, because this paint is really pigmented. And normally, that's exactly what I want, you know, usually on your projects, but for this, like Barbara, I guess is probably the closest. It is kind of like the watercolor effect without the actual watercolors. But I did not heat set this paint or the ink. <laughs> so hopefully it's not going to come back and uh, bite me. Just to paint this outline. We're going to spread this over just a little bit to make it a little more uniform. I kind of like that. Like I said, it does not have to be perfect, perfect, because we're going to restamp it anyway. But what else I got to do is I got to paint my stem, and I want my stem while well, this is drying. Well, hi, Nancy from Illinois. Joanne, my little brush is just, um, let's see if I can find one. It's just got a, it's got a point on it like that. Can you see that? It's just a little pointy brush. I like it because it, because of that little point. But I'm going to paint this stem green. And because this is white, I got to turn this guys where I can reach it better. And hopefully still stay in camera. There we go. It says this is probably going to take a couple coats. Because I had it painted white, which I really shouldn't have had to, but you know how you get going. And and then where the stem meets the paper, I'm just going to kind of move my brush around because I, I don't want it uh, straight edged either. I want it kind of random, even though you're probably not going to see a whole lot of it. Let's uh, get this dry. Because we'll second coat this green then. The paint I'm using, Joanne, is um, just a, it's a farmhouse paint. It's from farmhouse. It's farmhouse paint is what it is. Uh, to get the green, I mixed 70% um, the 70% cocoa color and the jalapeno. <clears throat> the yellow on the sunflower is lotus. It's an all-in-one paint, but I just watered it down to give me more uh, fluidity to be able to do what I wanted to do. So, this looks like it might need a third coat, but I watered the paint down too, which 
it's okay. This paint does dry fast. The nice thing about the farmhouse paint is I would not have to seal any of this because of the top coat built in. You're welcome, dear. Um, but I will seal it only because this may hang on a door when I get done. And I it would just be a little added uh, protection. So we'll give this one more coat here. And we should be good. Now we're going to leave that alone. Let's get this out of my way. Because I know I'll spell it. And now we're going to go back to our leaf. Make sure this is dry up here. The, the ink. And we're going to restamp these two to bring back all the detail. And then you'll see what I mean. Okay, and to restamp, that's probably the trickiest part is, and I got to stand up to do this because you got to reline everything up. <clears throat> Let me get some of this stuff out of my way. Stay in camera, okay. And I'm just going to re-ink my stamp. I don't want quite that much ink on there this time. But I do want enough to... This was probably about the hardest part for me was relining. I hover over my design, guys. I do not put it down until it is exactly where I think it needs to be. Checking both sides all the time because when you shift one side, the other side, the other side shifts too. And so we're going to see how well I did. And then again, hold it in place with one hand and hit all the little details with the other. We're going to see how close I got here. Now I'm going to lift up and pray. Boom. Not too bad. <clears throat> and sometimes if you shift it, it really doesn't look terrible. But see how that brought the detail back? And even though I was off a little bit, I don't, that doesn't bother me. It just looks like. You know, more petals. So there's that. And now we're going to go ahead and add. I didn't do the stem yet. So we're going to go ahead and add that stem on there. Down here. And I got to decide how do I want my stem to curve. Um, I think I like it better this way. And I'm just going to lay this stem right up in there like that and then this way this whoops see how i shifted it hopefully huh, not bad it will uh it worked and then we're going to restamp this leaf well thank you gorgeous well hey shannon thank you guys so much i'm glad you like it we're going to restamp the leaf just to bring back some of the details in the leaf. I really do not need to restamp the curly part because it got enough. So I'm going to just wipe this ink off of here like this because I don't really want that to be much darker than what I got it on there already. I'll get this down here like this and we'll try it again. 
see if my luck is with me again as far as lining up. Looks like right about there might be good. And lift up. Oh, we got way off. But hopefully, since I sealed that, I don't know if this ink will come off or not. If not, we are going to take our green paint and we're going to see if we can fix it. I got way off to the side over here. But I think if we just fill this in with a little green paint, I think it's going to look fine. Blend that a little bit like that. Yep. Pull that in there. Oops, is my head in the way of the camera? Sorry. Don't mean to be. But there. I think that will be fine. And then real quick, let me wipe my, my stamps off. I just take a wet wipe and wipe them off. I don't like the ink to dry on there. And no, I don't get them completely clean, but I get most of it off, which is good enough for me. And then I'll take them downstairs and put them in some dish soap and yeah. But let's go ahead and set this stuff real quick. I want to set this ink. So I don't touch it again. It's not completely dry, but it's probably dry enough. And now I'm going to take this stencil I had, but I don't want the whole thing, even though I like the stencil. But for this, I thought it would look really cool to kind of put holo fall right there. But there's certain elements on here that I do not want on here. So I'm just gonna put some tape, painter's tape along these areas so that I'm not even tempted to paint them because I know I will. And then I like to use the paint, the uh, pixie spray <clears throat> when I'm using reusable stencils. I'm just going to spray around that area that I'm going to be stenciling. Quick like. Let that dry a little few seconds. And then position this to where I want it. <clears throat> maybe like right there and stick it down oh, nope it's not centered this way let me get it kind of centered here there right about there And then I'm going to take my farmhouse paint <clears throat> in black, and that's what we're going to stencil with. It will not take much at all. And I use these um, makeup sponges, and I tear them and cut them down till there's nothing left. That's how many times I reuse them. So I'm going to get this stenciled on here. And I just pounce and I try and come straight down so that there's a chance of less bleeding. 
and I do light coats instead of trying to do a heavy one. I'm going to let that first coat dry just a little bit before I do the second one. I thought this would make a cute uh, fall door hanger. And I'm in Iowa. I guess I never introduced myself today. I'm Sherry with Butternut Hollow. And I'm the owner-operator of Butternut Hollow in uh, Oxford Junction, Iowa. It's a very rural town, which is why I think I like the rustic. We live out in the country on a farm. The farm has been in my, um, my husband's family for over 125 years. I think in about nine more years, we'll have been in our family for 150 years, the same family. Now, hopefully that is good. I don't really have to dry it, but let me stand up and get this off of here and pray I don't have bleed through. Very cool. Very cool. Let's set this aside. And then I'm just going to add a couple more touches to it. And since I have that black paint out, I'm going to take and I'm, this leaf where I overstamped. I think we can fix it. I'm just going to add a thin black line. And you're never going to be able to tell that it's the paint and not the ink because by the time I seal this and by sealing this it, it does give it extra protection but I like that it also gives it the patina more uniform so yeah so there's that oops hang on here I got one little other spot right up here I want to fix like this we'll come down We'll bring this up a little bit. There. And there's that. And now I want this a little more, I don't know, I want a little more dimension on here, although this paper is great. So I'm going to take, this is part of the texture stamp, and I'm going to ink it up. Wipe off where I got ink when I don't want it. Hey, Carmen, how you doing, sweetie? And then I'm just going to lay sections of this down. I don't want the whole pattern. I just want this pieces here and there and wherever. And so I'm just bringing in... Just little sections of this stamp. No, no rhyme or reason. I just think it looks cool. Just because I love the grungy rustic look. Okay. And then I have some white here that I just do not like. So... We are going to take, 
This is uh, the Tim Holtz Distressed Walnut Stain. And I'm just gonna take my dauber and I'm just going to put it on the edges a little bit. Just to kind of tone down that white that's showing through. Well, thank you, Carmen. That's a lot coming from you, my talented friend. And I'm just going to go all the way around, mainly just on the pumpkin. Like I said, it's just to tone down that white. And I'll bring some over into the paper too. You really can't see it. It's very subtle, but that's what I like. <clears throat> and the last thing I got to do, anybody out there that follows me know, other than adding, I'm going to add a couple embellishments up on the stem. Do you know what I am about to do? I think you do. I'm going to take this black paint and I'm going to water it down a little bit. And I am going to splatter. I love splatter. A little more up there on the stem. But I also would like to take some of this black off maybe I'll just get a different brush because I don't want to mud up my yellow I'm going to take some of the yellow that I had left and I want some of that on the stem a little bit and then just a little hint of it on my board there I could go crazy with splatter you guys so I gotta really control myself now I'm gonna dry this like so hi Rita how you doing better late than never sweetie Carmen is this looking like a pumpkin yet Maybe not a Canadian pumpkin, but is it looking like a pumpkin to you? <laughs> Get this good and dry. Thank you, Jolene. I just like, I'm addicted to splatter. I make wood signs. They get splattered. Just about everything I make has got to have some kind of splatter on it. <clears throat> We'll add some, a tie around up the stem and I'll put a hanger on there and I'll show you a cool, a tool, a cool tool that I use for curling the wire. I've had it for years. I'm sure they still make them, but I just had mine for years. But I want this black paint dry or pretty dry before I, because I like this way this turned out and I really don't want to screw it up. Rita, I did have a good time on my vacation. I actually relaxed. You know, in the beginning, it's funny. I found it hard to relax, but yes, it was wonderful. And I was with my sisters. And so that's always fun. And went and seen Liz from Liza Jane Designs. And that was fun. So yes, it was nice. Thank you, Carmen. So it was, it was a good time. I spent seven hours in a car yesterday though to get home so that part wasn't so fun but it was worth it so i'll do the hanger first you guys well let that black paint dry i take just 
two wires and I actually twist them myself by putting them in my drill and you know turn it on you twist them together and turn it on it twists it twist them together for you but this tool has a little slot in it I should probably show you guys that and then you put the end of your wire in that slot this is really made for one wire but I can usually get it to work and then you just roll it and then pull it out and then I get these nice twists to it that stops the wire from coming through your hole and I like that because then I don't have to worry about it pulling through and um oh I'm out of camera sorry pulling through and coming out so then you just adjust this wire sorry I'm adjusting this wire for how big I want the hanger and that looks about good and then I'll just curl this end again And then you just give it a pull and it comes out. And I just smush it down. And then you have a cute little hanger, too. And then to finish this off, well, hey, Sunny, happy Monday to you, dear. I'm going to take, this is just some uh, sorry ribbon that I had. And I actually want to wrap it a couple times so I'm gonna lay it on the front like this and wrap this around this way and wrap this one around this way and actually I think I'm gonna give this one a second wrap there we go and then I'm just gonna tie it off tie a knot like this and let that hang And there we go, you guys. There is our Hello Fall Pumpkin. I know it's big. Too big to catch the whole thing in camera. but And that was all from taking a board that looked like that to this. And if, if you noticed, it was not that hard. But yet, it was doable. Yes, that's what the tool is, Jolene. If you see one, snatch it up. It's really handy. So I hope you guys like this project. Like I said, it's pretty simple. I sell all the stamps and the decoupage paper, the, the paint, um, the Tim Holtz ink and that in my shop here on our farm in Iowa or on my website, hollowcrafts.com. Um, but uh, for the paper, I do sell that, but you go to Royce's Recycled uh, Treasures.com and you will let me bring myself back up. Maybe you can get a better picture of it. There we go. If you go to RoyceRecycled.com and look for a retailer close to you, um, they will be able to help you too with the paper. Um, we always like having people shop local, so please do. Thank you, Colleen. So Hope you enjoyed my project. I will get a finished picture of it where you can see the whole thing because I know it's tall. Um, and you guys have a good evening. Thank you all so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys next Monday. Have a great evening. Bye.